Brian. And I'm Joyce. And uh, now that we've finished our odyssey of uh, visiting all of the disused stations and stops of the Chicago Aurora and Elgin Railway, we thought we would take uh, a little bit of time just to reflect on our experience and our overall impressions. Uh, and so some quick stats on the uh, our journey. We visited all five major branches of the Chicago Aurora and Elgin Railway, including the main line, the Aurora branch, the Elgin branch, the Batavia Spur, and the Geneva Spur. Um, we visited over 70 sites uh, of the former stations, stops, and facilities, uh, substations of the, uh, the railway. Um, and we covered all 60 miles of that trackway that embodied those, those five branches. Although in truth, we actually traveled about 350 or more miles, um, riding it many times, doing some reconnaissance, exploration, uh, just trying to get the lay of the land sometimes, particularly where the pathway was discontinuous. Um, so yeah, we, we actually covered a lot more miles than the actual uh, original 60 miles of the trackway. Um, and we filmed this over about eight weeks. And uh, during the summer, as you can tell, um, and it, um, overall the weather's been fairly reasonable. Kind of hot some days. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So Joyce, what's what's your overall impressions of this trip? Well, I remember when you first brought it up to me, I remember thinking you're just totally nuts. Um, Brian's done quite a bit of biking in the past, but I really haven't. And when he was talking about doing this project and started describing the length of the Elgin branch and we would be riding it round trip and stopping and filming in one day, I thought he was just totally nuts and there was just no way I was going <laughs> to have the endurance to be able to to do all that. Um, but I surprised myself, I, you know, yeah, did very built well. up our endurance quickly, although especially on the hotter days when we were filming, um, you can kind of tell it near the end that we're both kind of running out of steam pretty fast. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think overall, um, you know, I enjoyed riding the trails. I think we should be very thankful that we have these trails um, available to us. I, I did realize, you know, I don't have a favorite amongst the trails. They're all, there's parts I like about each of them and parts I didn't like. Um, I did realize I kind of tend to like the more natural areas through the forest preserves or nature preserves or even just you know going through the communities but more when um, there's trees and vegetation around especially when it's 95 out I prefer the shade to the sunny spots um, and you know it's not that I dislike going through some of the the town areas you know if we were heading there to go to lunch or something I probably you know would be more interested in that, but if we were out just for a bike ride for exercise, I prefer the the more natural areas. Um, I think it was interesting to find that there's still, throughout the, the, all the five different branches, there's still seven of the original stations standing. Some are in use, you know, well, they're all still in use, and obviously not for um, the their original intention, but um, mm -hmm. some are museums or community centers or restaurants. Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, yeah so that was interesting. Um, trying to think. Um, you know, one thing I guess I hadn't realized before that, you know, obviously there's, as Brian mentioned, there's 60 miles of trails and very few people are going to set out and try to do 60 miles in a day. Um, but, you know, you don't really have to do that. You can do short amounts, like, you know, just to walk into a town to um, have lunch or go shopping or walk, you know, through, you know, length of the more na natural part of the trails. Um, you can also, if you're wanting to explore the different parts but don't want a huge long bike ride, most of the places along the different branches, there's free parking. You might have to kind of look around for it a bit, but you can park, drive somewhere, park, and then explore that that segment of the trail. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something we hadn't ever really done before and as we did each one we would have to be searching on um, Google Maps to like where could we park. <laughs> but we never had any trouble parking. No, we had no trouble parking. Um, which kind of is the other thing is, you know, like we're filming this, hopefully it's the only summer, it's definitely the first summer of the COVID-19 pandemic and um, you can tell that affected the trails, you know, 
couple things we could see the effect of. I mean, you can see people wearing masks while they're on the trails. There's also probably more people on the trails um, now. I mean, they're well used, but there are probably more people now because of um, people who are out of work or working from home and just out to get some exercise that day. Um, the other thing, you know, we really notice going through the different um, towns and stuff is that there were fewer cars there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were cars parked, you know, for shopping or the restaurants, but the village parking was not as full as it normally would be. And the metro parking lots generally would be packed to the hilt and there would only be a handful yeah, of cars. That was a little subduing. <laughs> so anyway, what are your thoughts, Brian? Um, overall, I enjoyed the experience quite a bit. Um, I think one of the things we both realized was that we've been living in this area, DuPage, Kane, Cook County, for uh, 35 years, and um, how truly little we knew about many of the communities here. Uh, you've, we've driven through them hundreds of times um, behind a, a car with closed windows, usually, and uh, it's w one of the learnings from this is, is that you can see a lot more of the communities by uh, biking through them and the railway would take you through the heart of many of these cities and towns and so on so you got to see uh, see them from a vantage point you hadn't seen before and so that was uh, quite illuminating and then it took you through the rural parts of uh, DuPage and Kane as well um, some of the uh, the back roads the uh, where a lot of the farming used to take place. A lot of it's been built up, of course, now, but uh, you could have easily envisioned how, uh, back in the day, uh, so much of this area was rural and uh, supporting farmers and so on. Um, the other observation is is that each of the branches was very unique. Um, you, It's not true at all to say that if you ride one of these branches of spurs, you've ridden them all. They were all quite different from one another. Different communities, different, some were open, much more open in terms of the uh, vegetation, some were uh, much more grown over. Um, so you, and the, the, the things you saw along the way, airports, uh, golf courses, um, commu various communities and so on. So it, um, it varied quite a bit from uh, branch to branch. For me, some of the highlights um, included the seven stations that Joyce uh, alluded to. Uh, that was exciting to see that about 10% of the stations still exist, um, and in particular two of them in Villa Park, which are in excellent shape. Uh, some of the uh, other remnants of stations still existed too, like the, the stairs to nowhere at, at the High Lake Station on the Geneva Spur, like the uh, remaining cinder platform um, at Church Road on the Aurora branch. Uh, that was exciting to see. And then sprinkled along all the trails, you would see the signal bases. Um, they're easy to not notice, you know, riding by them. Um, but if you're looking for them, they're there and you can find them. And then of course, the bridges. Many of the smaller bridges are still from the, the original railway. Um, we didn't explore them all, but Many of the smaller bridges that we explored, say 15 to 20 foot span or less, were of the original railway. So if you're walking along or running along or riding along and you just take a few steps down, you can see the many of the, uh, the original uh, construction of, of some of these bridges. Um, the other thing that was of interest to me was how the railway shaped the topography of the land. Um, the bis biggest example of that was along the Aurora Branch in South Wheaton, how Warrenville Road had been split, bifurcated by the, the railway at an oblique angle and forever became Plamondon Road and Weisbrook Road with this ungainly set of turns uh, joining them together. And that will likely be that way forevermore because of the, the presence of this railway. The other thing that uh, struck, strikes me about the, the journey is, is still some lingering mysteries, for instance, um, the exact location of the Winfield Road Station on the Geneva Spur. I think that's still open to debate. 
I think the exact location of the Gary Road station, um, which is was likely located somewhere within what is today St. James Park, uh, within the DuPage County Forest Preserve. Um, and then the third mystery is the, the bridge that was never built uh, over the Elgin branch between Jewel Road and Lincoln Avenue. Um, those are still some mysteries, I think, to be solved regarding the uh, this railway, and there's probably others to be sure. And thanks to an alert viewer, F.F. Shrek, who helped us to clear up a mystery as to the exact location of the Stratford Hill Station on the main line in Elmhurst, Illinois. The viewer pointed out a farmhouse in the background of one of the period photographs of the station, which it turns out still stands today, and so enabled us to pinpoint the station about 1,000 feet west of our original guesstimate. So that's excellent, and we very much appreciated that information. We met many people, interesting people along the way. Um, we met a young man from Canada who was traveling the world, a very fast walker who kept up a cadence with us. Um, we'd stop and, and do a recording at a station and move on, and he was keeping up with us, and um, uh, we were bantering back and forth uh, at each of the stop stations. Um, many people kept uh, came and asked us if we needed help. Uh, apparently we... Looked like we needed it. <laughs> we needed help. Um, many people asked us if, uh, you know, they saw us uh, with the cameras and they asked if we wanted our photograph taken, uh, which was very kind of them, but that wasn't what we were looking to do at that particular moment. And um, other people came up and asked us what we were doing and they were surprised to learn that there was a station here or there was a station there or a substation and that the railway was electric, which sort of uh, substantiated in our own minds that um, there was a need for videos like this to uh, all the people that live in DuPage, Kane, Cook Counties, and elsewhere, uh, unfamiliar with the history of this, this uh, railway. So we thought that this would uh, serve a useful purpose. And we didn't know. Uh, I, I've ridden the trails hundreds and hundreds of times, riding right by artifacts that I didn't notice um, until uh, we started looking into it. So, um, so the meeting all these people just reminded me too that uh, the original railway linked together all these communities, and um, it's still doing so today as a as a trailway. Uh, whether you're walking, running, riding horseback, cycling, whatever, you can go from town to town, community to community. Uh, to, to go to restaurants, to shop, to just see the sights um, and get to meet people along the way. People that we met along the railway were always very friendly. Um, so uh, I think that's one of the, the, the nice things is most people tend to be very polite um, on the, the trails that, uh, that you meet. And I guess uh, one other observation is, is that um, some of the communities, like Lombard in particular, they they celebrated the, the electric railway going through their town. At each of the four stations, they had historical markers with nice photographs and descriptions and everything. And then El, uh, Glen Ellen had um, a bronze marker uh, indicating where the, the main station used to stand. Um, and I guess I was surprised to see that some other communities hadn't done so, uh, in particular Wheaton, where the railway was once headquartered took up a huge footprint in their their backyard, so to speak, uh, with the, the, the rail yards that existed, the dispatcher's tower, the main station, the hub for the entire railway. I guess I expected to see some sort of historical marker, so waiting if you're listening, um, something to think about. You ought to uh, celebrate that a little bit. Um, and I guess finally I'd recommend this, this trip to anybody, uh, whether you're local or coming from farther afield. Uh, I think it's uh, well worth it to, to see all the communities and to get to know a little bit about the railway history in the area as well. So uh, those were my many thoughts on the, uh, the overall experience. But before we go, um, there's a, a few housekeeping points that uh, we, we should take care of before we end this. One is, is that many observant viewers will, will say, well, you didn't actually visit all of the stations and stops of the Chicago Aurora and Elgin Railway, uh, in particular all of the stations 
east of uh, Forest Park heading into Well Street in Chicago where the uh, railway originally terminated and that's in fact true we did not there's just no good bicycle trail um, beyond Forest Park so that's why we, we we stopped at that point it might be something we do in the future but um, that's where we stopped at this time uh, we also didn't cover the Mount Carmel spur which uh, was mostly for funerary services uh, where uh, bereaved families would with the, the coffins of a deceased family member or a friend would be taken to uh, one of the, the cemeteries I think mostly south of the, the railway we did not visit that again maybe a future topic for a video um, and we also didn't cover the short Westchester uh, spur that headed a few miles south of Bellwood um, with uh, three or four stops I believe we didn't cover that as well so again these might be topics for future videos but I would say that we do have more videos planned not only about the Chicago Aurora and Elgin Railway but also about other uh, local history and, and regional history so stay tuned for that um, and before we sign off um, I, I did want to we wanted to thank sorry we wanted to thank um, uh, some individuals and organizations that helped us along the way one of course being the Illinois Prairie Path and the uh, Fox River Trail organizations and volunteers that support that um, as Joyce said we, we should be thankful to that we have these resources available to us um, so we wanted to give a big shout out to, to them in particular we also wanted to thank uh, David Sadowski of uh, the trolleydodger.com website he's been supportive of this Glenn Brewer of the railroadglorydays.com website and then of course the Central uh, Electric Railway Rail Fans Association, which wrote the 1961 book, uh, the, the Great Third Rail. They've been very supportive of this as well. So a big thanks to all of them. And just a just to state that the mission of this particular channel is to uh, focus on local and regional history, um, finding history in your own backyard. Uh, in most cases, it's right around us. It's 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 right in front of you and um, so uh, what we would hope to do with this channel is encourage people to go out and find the local regional history of wherever they happen to be and um, uh, because I think it's it's well worthwhile to to know that about uh, uh, wherever you live so if this was at all informative uh, informational to you um, entertaining then uh, and if you're so inclined then please like and subscribe and until uh, the next segment or series uh, bye bye bye